I'm I'm an empath. Mm-hmm. I'm a tuning fork for agony, and I would rather have, I would rather risk the disdain of everybody than 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 risk my own self loathing for not saying what I think I need to say. so kind would you mind introducing yourselves for the podcast yes, i'm timo i play bass and uh, i sing a little bit i'm sandro and play the guitar and also sing a little bit <laughs> uh, hi i'm rafi and i'm uh, i play the drums do you also sing a little bit no <laughs> you're the no, only better not, not. Better not. I, I sometimes yell at the beginning of a, of a song because like i'm in my, in my zone i guess but no no i i don't have a microphone and the band that you guys play for is? Heckler. Oh, sorry, oh, Heckler, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, shit, okay, I have a band name. <laughs> sorry, I, I realize you guys are very tired. You guys have uh, been uh, touring, uh, this is the second to the last show, right? Yeah, and exactly. Of 18 shows. 18 shows? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not. 23 days, uh, 23 yeah. days, 18 shows. Mm-hmm. It's, this is like the 17th yeah. show. Tomorrow is the last one in Singapore. Yeah, we're getting a little tired. <laughs> like. Our bot is getting tired. Yeah, I hope like, the last two concerts will be fine. But yeah, I think so. Give the best. Yeah, it was like a mixture of uh, um, like everything, new impressions. In we toured mainland uh, Java and two shows in Bali. So the main thing was Indonesia. So there were a lot of impressions, uh, a lot of food, different food. You know, our stomachs weren't that good sometimes. So. Uh, and different uh, de- temperature goals. De- temperature, like uh, sleeping situations, like it was a mixture of a lot of things that makes us like now really tired. Yeah. But you know, it's like the last two days, like they're going so fast. And still having fun. Sure, like, sure, yeah. Showing every just, day. Uh, we, we, we feel it. We're not the youngest guys anymore, at least I am. <laughs> not so that young anymore, but. Listen, I'm almost 40, and I'm at I'm at a hardcore show on a Thursday night, and I work in the morning. So, oh, okay. <laughs> you're never, you're yeah, never, cannot, yeah, all right. You're never too old for this. Never stop. stop. <laughs> so I do want to talk about this tour a little bit and your impressions and some stories you might have. But I'd like to talk about the history of the band a little bit, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm, sure. Um, when did you guys form? Why did you form? Where did you form? I think 2015. Yes. 
2015. Uh, the spring of 2015 it was when I joined, yeah. and that was when when the band finally became a real band and we found a name and started to... Yeah, me and Rafi were friends for a long time, and then uh, Rafi started to play drums for just for fun. Yeah. I play guitars. Six years back now, yeah. yeah. I played guitars for a long time in different bands. And then, yeah, we just played together for fun, and then someday we were looking for a bass player, and so we had Timo join us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because it was kind of we had the space, we had the time, we had some ideas. So uh, then we we two, Sandra and I said, yeah, let's kind of do this, I guess. Uh, and then we were uh, like uh, writing letters. Oh, we're looking for a bass player uh, in our local. Uh, uh, places we hang out and stuff, and like where music happens, punk music. And then it was really quick. We kind of got through connections. We got to you. No, we got to Timo. Uh, no, I, I met Timo at, at the Hirschenecken bar. Uh, you're the connection then. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I just know that he plays the guitar, and then someone told me that he also played the bass. So okay. kind of generic, but like and then from there we we uh, jam. Yeah. Basically, uh, just fucking play. But we always had like uh, we always wanted to play live in Master Clash as much as possible. I think yeah. was from the beginning this was like our thing, and we wanted to, we were always talking like yeah let's go to from the first first three hours we yeah. had to, together we were always talking about playing live and shows. And also this this tour out Southeast Asia tour was like a theme from the beginning. Like the first time we met, we were talking about this. It was like. Yeah. Can the dream come true now? Maybe someday we're going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> now it happened. That's interesting. Why Southeast Asia? It has a good reputation. Yeah. It has a good reputation for punk music and punk scene. So that was like the, I don't know, more or less the natural thing to think about because the, the punk scene in Switzerland is kind of small and a little bit dying. So we were always thinking about something that did a little bit more action, a little bit more alive and yeah, and uh, we have also some friends who did the Southeast Asia, I think, three times, two times, I yeah. don't know. And uh, also Eleni, who, t- who joined us for uh, um, filming and photography. Uh, she went three years ago to Indonesia to make a reportage about the punk scene. And so we saw also the, all these pictures here, all the stories. And so that was also the reason why it was uh, for us really easy to get or easier, yeah. yeah. When you have the connection before, and like she knows uh, people like that, we're sure you can trust. Like from the beginning, right? Uh, that was uh, like a way much easier to say, yeah, let's do this, right? And yeah, and things happen. Like half a year later, we're here. So yeah, it was I think it was more easier for us through connections, like Eleni and other people who already went here made it easier for us than probably for other bands, I guess. Sure. Yeah. What led you to this kind of music? What led you to DB? Like individually or as a band? I mean... Individually as a band? Yeah, uh, for me, uh, it's like one type of punk I like, I listen to. And it kind of went off when I started playing drums, because that's the, at the beginning that's the only thing I wanted to play. And that's the only thing, oh, it's so rad, I want to do this. So it started off like with bands and all that stuff and listening to bands and try to play it along. It started with like uh, playing drums more, listening to DB. But it's just, for me, it's just one type of punk I like to listen to. Like many types of, of music styles, uh, basically in punk in general, the whole bubble. I mean, do you consider yourself specifically a DB band or? No, no, no. 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 Okay. <laughs> Normally we just say hardcore punk. You just say hard. But with an uh, emphasis on the punk. Okay. <laughs> because we don't want to be mixed up with like this modern hardcore metalcore stuff. Right. So, right. Yeah, it's very famous like in certain c- circles. So we, we are not like into that super much. So yeah, our emphasis is on hardcore punk. And I like play, play DB basically a little bit behind. We're not the DB band. Even though we, we called our tour uh, DB Attic because we kind of are. But it's uh, like, yeah, we just wanted to have a, cool, a good name, <laughs> and that basically came out. We, yeah, didn't make much thought about it in the end, I guess. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, but we looked I think the there actually was one, was one guest of a concert who was uh, a bit uh, 
I don't know. Um, confused? Yeah, confused or even uh, enttäuscht. Uh, disappointed? Disappointed. disappointed because it's not that strictly. You know, we're not a discharge like cover band. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, man. Over here. Sorry. city in Switzerland? Basel. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the scene there because I don't know. I mean, I don't know much about Switzerland at all except like Celtic Frost. Um, <laughs> so uh, tell me about your scene. Um, exactly, yeah. Basel is kind of, Basel is really small, but, it's one of, really but it's, small. it is one of the biggest cities in Switzerland. Okay. And it's in the, the, the punk scene also is very small. And uh, I think it's only in the last year or two that, that a few young people came. But before we were like the young guys, <laughs> and there were only older guys, and uh, are, so it's not really active anymore. It's like really difficult to get people to get out of, on the streets or out to a show. Yeah, but I think now it's getting better. The mm, new generation, yeah, it's, it's like better. some hope left that there's like, <laughs> yeah, they make something happen. Again. Also, <laughs> venues are a big problem. There's yeah. like there's been a few squads, but now there's none anymore, or they cannot make shows, and there's like one place that organizes shows but it's like a legal place and they also need to make money so they cannot take every show and you always have to consider yeah, you have to pay the barkeeper and the sound guy and, do, 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 and that makes it complicated because you don't you are not going to have a lot of people if, if it's like 30 people a night it's like you're, you've done it it's yeah. a great show <laughs> but I actually organized the show with like five people <laughs> we, we have a few of those yeah. Yeah. everybody has I guess <laughs> So, do you guys need to travel if you want to see shows? Like, how often do you have bands uh, come through? Uh, like, like once um, a month. Once a month. Like Was international bands. Yeah. Yeah. Ob wir reisen müssen. Reisen. Yeah, we. I. I, tra I used to travel, but uh, for special bands mostly. Yeah. But if there's a special band I really want to see and that's not coming close, I, I'm also. I, I, would, I don't know. I think I drove like 1,000 kilometers to see a band once. So it's, yeah, it happens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, and I love to do it. <laughs> so in, you know, I think in general, not super many bands come through. Not Switzerland really. is a good place for bands, though. In general, because you can, there is a lot of spaces that are uh, getting money from the government for like cultural work, and they always kind of help bands by paying them good money, even though the um, there might, might not be so much people. So it's often it's a good place because Switzerland is central and you can connect different uh, countries in Europe uh, through Switzerland. It's, mm -hmm. A lot of bands come through, but not through Basel, rather through Zurich or Bern right. or, or Biel. Or Geneva or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Also a special yeah, area. I mean, we play like perhaps usually like two concerts in a month in Switzerland. And so, and every, every uh, show is also other bands and most of the time also like from other countries. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you just have to know the places and the right persons and that's the thing it's not really easy to get yeah. into but the, I think it's like in whole Europe yeah. like also for us to, um, to organize Europe tours is like hard work yeah, it's <laughs> much easier to do this tour now <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of. Yeah. why is it difficult to organize tours through Europe? 
uh, you have to have the contacts. Okay. And uh, the punk scene is kind of cut off, and the, it's like you know, it's like a, a system working inside itself. Everybody knows each other, and they they give the names and the connections, but we don't have those because we are like not super straight cross punks, or we're not hanging around in this this these kind of uh, areas most of the time. So we never really got part of the scene as individuals, and though we don't have the the contact, or we don't didn't have we didn't have them in the beginning, but I think now by now oh, it would be easier. We, I mean, we toured. This is actually our third tour as a band. So the other first two shows were in Europe, and we uh, mostly you team organized all fucking how many emails did know, you write? Know, how many thousand each? Yeah, like, like like organizing all by ourselves. So that that was the, the hard work part, and I think now we we have some contact, so it's mm-hmm. a little bit better than in the beginning. Yeah. But also as a small band, it's so hard to get on like a, a show, right? Because it's a small young band, not much output, musical output yet. So that's kind of was hard. But it's no a little label. bit better now, yeah. I guess. But the funny thing is, like in Switzerland, it's super easy for us to play. Yeah. We never like we never looking yeah, okay. for concerts. We get, get yeah, always so. asked. I think we never looked around for a concert in Switzerland. Just, just no, happens for us. Yes. Switzerland is super easy for us. But Germany is like always. I don't know why, but Germany doesn't like us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys are from the, the German-speaking part of Switzerland. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about something you mentioned. Um, not having a label, because um, it, uh, I mentioned this before, but I discovered you guys through your Bandcamp page, mm-hmm. and you have all your releases there. I think there are three releases. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so you know, for me, somebody who's never met you guys, who had never heard of you guys, it was super easy for me to check you out. Living here in Malaysia mm-hmm. and listen to all of your music, how do you feel about Bandcamp as a platform? Uh, I find it kind of difficult that they they have no political statement. Mm-hmm. Like they also support uh, black metal bands with fascist background mm-hmm. and uh, rag bands. It's not that cool, but it's I, I, it's a, uh, still a cool idea to spread music. And also that you can spread it for free. I like that very much. Yeah. Is that important to you guys, like making really? music free? Yeah, yeah, when we right here we have we have um, our merch has fixed prices. But when we are on tour in uh, Europe, we always say like name your price, pay what you want for the shirts, for the tape, for everything we have. Just, yeah. pay, just, pay, just pay what it's worth to you and what you can give. Yeah, but also you know, uh, perhaps for, um, in Switzerland it's all DIY stuff. We don't spend much money for our merch. Yeah, we- uh, record our own stuff and like friends of ours print our shirts so the cost is kind of low still but yeah, yeah. now we, we like that and we can say yeah give what you want so the funny thing is like some guys like give us 10 Swiss francs it's like ten dollars whatever mm-hmm. for one tape right okay. we you would know have like never <laughs> asked for that much. Yeah. <laughs> like they just oh okay take that we're yeah. like what thank yeah. you Next, right. next person who come have no money can give one for free. That's for example, yeah. And that's why we like we, we have tapes, two tapes out, the demo tape and the self-titled tape, uh, which we have right here. So um, it's kind of cool to, to also share because it's a tape. It's not so, it's not so expensive to make, yeah. like a vinyl record. So you can kind of a little bit easier, can be easy going with the tape. Like, hey, come on, take that, man. Like, stuff like that. And there's also a guy in our hometown who has a machine to duplicate the tapes, and he can do like 16 at a time. So it's like yeah, it's, it's super like easy super for easy us. For he orders so. the tapes for us, and he replicates them, and we give him a little money for it, and then it's all, yeah, all set. It's like, he's a friend. He used to live with me, so it's like I don't know. We support each other. It's so kind of cool. That's awesome. To be honest with you, this is the first time I've heard of somebody doing a pay what you want for physical merchandise, because it's very common for, especially the electronic recordings, you know, because nobody really understands what the cost is of electronic distribution. So, you know, you've got your recording on one side, and then, mm. you know, theoretically, you can recoup that cost quickly, if you're not um, manufacturing cassettes and CDs and stuff like that. Mm. But for your t-shirts and stuff like that, there actually is a physical cost to <coughs> making them, ordering them, shipping them, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I feel it's very bold of you guys to yeah, I mean, still, some like I said, with the tape, some guys give us like 20 bucks yeah. for uh, for a shirt. And then we're, that's like super, the cost we spent to make the, sh- to make the shirt. Yeah. So we, we feel still feel comfortable. 
It was also like we, we couldn't decide how much we wanted to ask for. It's like we wanted to make them cheap, but we also thought like, yeah, but what is what's a fair price? And, mm -hmm. and then we just said, like, you know what, let them decide themselves. And most of the time people come and ask what's fair. And we said like, yeah, one shirt costs that much and then we have to print it and then we have to take it here and we have to make the design and stuff and then you can decide. So they, I don't know, kind yeah, okay. of get the process. Yeah, the thing is also when you tour through Europe, like uh, there's something, there's a difference when people pay in Germany than people want to pay in Spain, for example, in certain parts, you know? Because, like, generally, I guess, people in Spain spend less money in merch because they have less money sometimes. It depends where, of course, but that's also the thing. We don't have a fixed price, so people in Spain shall pay what they think is good. And in Germany, in Belgium, wherever, they pay what they think is worth it. Yeah, and I think we never felt, uh, like, exploited by anyone. No, no, like, no. we're always, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. The, sometimes there's a guy coming and saying like, oh, I really want a t-shirt, but I only have two bucks. And then it's like, it's like, mm, okay, a shirt. We are, we are yeah. using fair trade shirts, which are like five five bucks, one without print. So it's like, mm -hmm -hmm, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I have to, yeah. Okay, so you really want to have it, okay. <laughs> yeah. But, but like, that was yeah. Still feel comfortable with that. Yeah. yeah. Here it's different with the uh, with the tour in Indonesia. Because uh, we were also not really responsible for the merch because some guys made it yeah. uh, from, from Indonesia. So we, we said, yeah, you say how much people shall pay here because we have no clue, right? right, right. So, but other yeah. than that, yeah, we say, no, you can get what you want. Man. Cool. Uh, I have to be honest, I'm a very cynical person who doesn't have a high view of like, human... <laughs> <laughs> humanity yeah. and like uh, well yeah but uh, I that that's honestly like the best thing I've heard in years about RC and I. thank you <laughs> you guys you guys have reestablished my faith in humanity <laughs> oh, okay uh, that's too much okay. <laughs> slow down slow down <laughs> that's too much man. Let's talk about uh, the Southeast Asian tour you mentioned, uh, that you've been looking forward to it for basically since you formed. How has it met your expectations or what you expected to find? Did, was it what you were expecting? Was it different? Was it worse? Was yeah, it better? That's a, that's a huge question. 
I think. Uh, er. Well, first of all, let's start with what were you expecting? I think uh, I just, perhaps I just like to see like that punk's really not dead. That like there are places where like big scene, like big DIY stuff. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like people, like not just like two, three people in a city who like feeling the spirit or don't know what, but like many people. Is that what you found? Yeah, I mean, we played like now 16 shows, every show is really different. Mm -hmm. And I really think, yes. Uh, I think it's like, okay. no, it's not always, it's always different, but like, we met so many persons and so many people who were like in this for, I don't know, so many since it started here. Like, yeah. Yeah, well, first of all, I think you have expectations because you hear stories, right? Mm -hmm. And you hear different views and, oh shit, that and this, and you see pictures, videos, etc. So, of course, you have your certain kind of picture, and of course, you never probably meet that picture you have in your mind before you go, right? But I think in general, like what we found was like an, an intense scene. Intense in every aspect, in the better or worse sense. You know? Like with the DIY aspect, how people act and how they do, what they produce for themselves, how they make their own life uh, uh, with, with punk and build their lives, their lives around it. So that's so, stuff like really beautiful stuff. Yeah. But also on the other hand, like, like the alcohol abuse stuff, like really like small kids sleep at eight o'clock, drunk on the floor. That's uh, that can be like a little bit crazy yeah. for us to see because like stuff like that we don't really see in, in Europe or Switzerland. We don't see it here in Malaysia. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah yes. that, that was we had some intense uh, moments like that. Like we're oh fuck, this is crazy. Yeah. You know. So yeah, it's it's hard to say what we expected and what we found, but what we found was something really beautiful and intense for me. Yeah, and like something we. Really, Cannot compare. And, and nice people, of course, in general, like really like. Yeah. Some of the best people we met were in Indonesia and Bali. And here also, I mean, people are so cool here. The day we met people here, like, well, welcoming. So yeah. we're, and people actually care. Yeah. That, that's kind of, that's really cool because everywhere we go, people actually care about us coming there. That, that, that's not uh, in Europe, it's not everywhere. The, the case. Sometimes it's just like you, you get to a place and then you feel like you're more of a burden. Somebody is, is used to organize shows and he wants to keep the punk thing going but he also knows, oh, it's so much work and, so, mm, and then you come and you're early and, they, and, and they won't sleep at my home and I have to make breakfast for them. <laughs> People here really Everyone we met really appreciated us coming, and that's yeah, and, and all like that's amazing. <laughs> all friends in who in, uh, were invited, like always, like big groups sitting in a room and talking and smoking and drinking cigarettes. Yeah, and giving I drink, food, uh, like, drinking coffee. Like, yeah. like really, like uh, welcoming. Like, that's amazing. What's the craziest thing you saw on this tour? Oh, <laughs> really want to talk about this? <laughs> uh, well, what was it in uh, Solo? Solo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. you wanna, you wanna. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had the show in solo. It was like uh, a, re a, a big festival outside on the place, and it was like the place of just one ent entrance. And so, uh, yeah, among our fr uh, friends who toured many, uh, uh, toured like half of the tour with us or more, uh, started to play, and then uh, yeah, they were like. Uh, knife attack of two or three people came in with like swords and were uh, coming the entrance and yeah, actually uh, the, uh, many people took action against it but I think they're also getting some people hurt and uh, yeah that this one was like really tense like also yeah, yeah people were, getting hurt you can you have no way out and yeah. also like local people telling you telling us like fuck we're scared yeah. and that was like the only yeah, the only time I hear this, like, were Local so, yeah. yeah. Okay, like, the knife attack was because, like, punks were, like, drunk in front of a mosque, and some people uh, went mm. nuts, and then, yeah, there was this... Yeah, this, it was, like, a religion thing, but I, I'm not sure what the reason really was. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I guess. Oh, okay, and, what, and, yeah. and then, <laughs> when this all went, yeah, went kind of good, I think, like, no one died. 
and as far as we know. Yeah, and then okay, uh, show went on like Amok played again, and after <laughs> half hour, uh, yeah, machine machine gun armed police came in with the mask right. and I like, like, s- like stopped the whole thing. This one, I think, uh, we got told because of the alcohol consumed right. outside, and also uh, um, one guy who also came with us on tour. So after, yeah, we just uh, tried to get out there, and yeah, and uh, our friends took our stuff then. And, um, yeah, they see like that uh, like police or military took the street pumps in uh, cars, vehicles, and yeah. So yeah, it's just the whole situation when it went down so fast. Like you fucking guys with knives attacking people, and like half an hour later, like mil- fucking military police comes in with their M16. You're like, you have no clue what's going on. Everyone's blah, uh, uh, speaking. We don't understand. We're like, what? What the hell's going on, right? And then we're, hey guys, you gotta get out, and you just leave your stuff, right? And you just go out of the back door. It was like, wow, what's going on? <laughs> like really, we were like. Yeah. That's that was that was weird. That was like the crazy situation. Yeah. I can see what you guys mean by it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also, like the stories you hear, like after a show, a punk like died because of a roller accident. Yeah, and yeah. one other came back uh, with a another one was like smashed face, smashed his face in, and came to our show, like stuff like that. Like really gnarly stuff went down. Yeah, and fights every show. Yeah, they fight every show. That was crazy too. Like what the hell are you guys doing? Fucking like really yeah. punching the shit out of each other. So yeah, uh, we uh, our scene is is very sedate. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing that might happen is somebody might try to pick you up for like crowd surfing and then drop. <laughs> okay, that, that does happen occasionally, unfortunately. Yeah. No, it was really wild, like in general. But that thing in solo, yeah. uh, that was. Yeah, that, that was scary for a few, a few moments. Yeah, that, that was terrifying. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm surprised you guys didn't go home like right after that. No, I, I, I would have. If, if, if it would have happened a week earlier, I swear I would have gone yeah, home straight. Yeah, 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 there were some other stories. <laughs> yeah, we all had our ups and downs, you know, our personal ups and downs because like it's all tense, right? Yeah, and I think it's also like a message if you stop your tour because like things like this. Right. Yeah, you're making also a message. And you, I think you also do a little message if you just going on. We were also talking about if we play after the night knife attack because like everyone's shaking and stuff and then yeah, we said like yeah we, we play because it's like yeah a message we don't want to send the wrong message no. But we couldn't the police stopped it. Yeah the police stopped the show before us anyway. That, so. And that, that would have been the biggest stage we have ever played on yeah. by the way. It was like really it, <laughs> Yeah, we were already scared when we had to sound check on that stage because it was like <laughs> yeah, so big and we're used to like the small crowded spaces. Yeah. yeah, and we sort of also like for us a little sign that we don't belong on big stage. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're fine with that. They, yeah. they need knives and machine guns to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it underground. Just yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the only way. <laughs> What advice would you give bands who are thinking of touring Southeast Asia? Prepare your stomachs for some... Yeah, so you mentioned the food was an issue. Um, uh, well, l- let me get it straight. The food was great. <laughs> but uh, it was... Because they're, I'm not used to eat so much rice, for example. Ah, I you know? And maybe when I eat some whatever chicken or something, I might have just gotten up something bad, I guess. Okay. I would get it straight, the food was always good, they cooked for us, like in the morning, afternoon, and evening, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not because of that, it's just like, our stomachs are, for certain things, are not really used to, I guess, or even if you have, like, tap water, uh, like, make the ice cubes, right. if you drink iced tea, I don't know, shit can go into your body, it might, can be anything, so, yeah, it's not a big issue, you know, but it's just a, yeah. I mean, anything else you tell bands who are thinking of touring? Don't overthink things. I think in the beginning we overthought everything. Yeah. We were always thinking like, who can we do that? Is it polite? Is it impolite? Are we doing this right? Are we doing it wrong? Right behavior, wrong behavior. And at some point we just realized, maybe we just start doing things and somebody is going to tell us, hey, yeah. that's not cool. Because those guys are our friends and not strangers. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess. And the people are inviting you, so they, they will tell you if you do something wrong. And they also understand that you're from the other end of the world. And it's okay. It's okay to do mistakes. Yeah, I guess that's it. And basically, uh, just uh, uh, stay.
stay together, I guess, in certain situations, you yeah. know, like, yeah. Don't make Keep drunk tattoos. <laughs> Don't make drunk, drunk tattoos, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, just be careful with yeah. alcohol. There's, like, bad infections. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not, like... Super at the end of the oh world. shit! So you actually do have a yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. <laughs> after second after after second show. <laughs> Dude, it was and, not and it's funny. Affected. It's like it's yeah, affected. Yeah. He had like foot like this and shit. Like no, like no. But just general advice, yeah. Just uh, yeah, uh, use your head, I would say. Yeah. Or don't. And <laughs> yeah, with it. Just <laughs> No, I, I would say that's solid advice. Don't don't get tattoos drunk while yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. touring Fuck in Asia. You. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, uh, as you're finishing up this tour, is there anything you want to say to the kids who came out and saw you and put you up for the last? Yeah, the, uh, I think we have to say uh, yeah. That was also like a really great thing. Like there are coming many people, like many shows, and we were like, are you again? And yeah, it's like for us really amazing. Like, yeah, what well, we have to say first, like thank you. Yeah. Like, it's sincere, thank you. Because we're, yeah, we're still not a, we're not a big band, we're just like, you know, just want to make a mu noise and say something to our music, I guess. But still, like, people, like, go crazy mm -hmm. and come s several times to our shows. Like, I think we're sincerely grateful for that. Yes. I guess, yeah, a big thank you, I'd say. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks to you, man. <laughs> that, was, that was cool.